Hey guys, I was planning to make a, a video to quickly show the the pinout um, of RGB's card for a friend. And I thought, well, might as well put it on YouTube in case somebody else might be interested. And, you know, if you just getting into RGB SCART and you've been using other cables before, you said, oh, I want the RGB quality, but you're not really sure how it's wired inside. You're trying to modify an existing cable or you're trying to make your own cable. Uh, I sure was confused uh, by it in the beginning. So I just want to show you a quick overview in the context of retro gaming consoles so i'll just go over the pins that go um that are relevant relevant to um console to tv or console to upscaler um there are a lot of other pins that i won't go into because they're for other purposes like connecting vcr to vcr for instance um, that's not the purpose of this video so i put here a good quality um snes cable for reference, but we will use as an example a very cheap $4 PS1 RGB cable uh, bought off eBay because it's really clear how it's wired inside. It's also a good example of a bad cable. Uh, I'll go into the details of what is good, what is bad. Um, but it's fairly open, so it's easy to actually. Uh, go through it as an example so we'll start with um, the pins for rgb pin 7 9 and 11 7 9 and 11 um, now this is a ps1 cable and ps1 requires uh, 220 microfarad uh, capacitors on the rgb lines you'll find that with a lot of rgb consoles uh, resistors or capacitors are needed either on the sink or on the RGB lines. Um, good resources to find that out are uh, retrorgb.com. Um, there's a page on each system and um, Tim Weddington also has a bunch of diagrams. If you type any console in RGB SCAR, that's the first picture you'll find um, and shows uh, uh, detail pinout and the and the detailed uh, and and the required uh, components uh, for each console. So next to each, uh, you'll have actually the ground pin. Now you see this cable here has only one ground, and it's wired on the ground of composite. This will work, assuming that your um, uh, equipment on the other side has all the other pins grounded. On, on the other side basically otherwise here you can see that blue is not grounded so if you use a proper cable that has um, shielded and ground and with individual ground by uh, by RGB line for instance a VGA cable in a VGA cable most VGA cables have their own ground per color you'd want to uh, wire to the separate uh, dedicated ground of the color so that's it for RGB. Now let's move on to the second row under here. And this is a very important pin. It's a composite or in other words, sync. Now they are sync can be very confusing. Um, there are lots of, there are lots of types of sync. Um, My Life in Gaming made amazing videos explaining the differences. I won't go in detail, but doesn't matter which type of sync you will use. Um, you need to wire it on this pin, which is the composite video pin. Um, so even if you use, you use uh, Sync on Luma, which is S-Video uh, for Sync, you still wire it here. And the black pin, the black wire here is the, the dedicated ground for Sync. Now, certain console, this is, this is actually a very important one because um, if you use C-Sync, a composite Sync, on on this pin for certain consoles, you you will need to attenuate it on um, by a resistor. Again, you can find this information on Retro RGB. But basically, um, a lot of consoles of that time, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, I'd put uh, C-Sync at a TTL level, which is a voltage too high for TVs and most equipments like uh, upscalers, and you risking uh, damaging your equipment if you feed TTL level. C sync uh, through that pin. So just one thing to keep in mind. Now, this one here is interesting. Um, the brown cable here, I don't know if you can see very well, but the brown cable here is five volts. 
and it goes into pin 8 and pin 16. Now, between pin 8 and pin 16, there's a 180 ohm resistor. So I will go through pin 16 first, which to me is, is the most important one. Pin 16, when fed uh, 1 to 3 volts, um, tells the TV basically to enable RGB. Um, as you may know, SCART can carry all sorts of uh, different signals, for instance, composite, as here. So, for instance, if I were to remove, um, to, to disconnect this pin, most TVs will basically uh, enable, uh, output whatever's on this pin, so composite video. So, for to output RGB, we need to tell the TV to not display composite but the display RGB and it needs to be uh, told by having one point uh, one to three volts on this pin 16 here so this is five volt and this is pulled down by this resistor uh, to three volts or less now here this pin is interesting because I still to this day don't know why cables uh, cable manufacturers bother to actually wire this because this pin is called the status pin, um, status and aspect ratio. And I believe that if you, uh, so, so if you wire five to eight volts, it's gonna tell the TV to display on 16 by nine. Now this is a problem with TVs that are modern enough to have a 16 by nine mode. Um, you will have to change the mode every time you turn on the console. Um, so people have worked around that by either hardwiring 5 volt inside the TV because they will never ever display anything in 16 by 9 or disconnecting this pin from the uh, from from each and uh, each single cable they're using uh, yeah so that's something to keep in mind and the last one is the easiest um, it is audio as you can see here this even this cheap cable has actually uh, so I'll go through the pin out first so you get right audio um, ground and left audio. So what's interesting here is that the cable manufacturer actually went through the trouble of using a separate ground for audio. This is good practice. If you have enough wires, wire uh, the ground for audio independently. So that's about it. Uh, that covers all the pins that are relevant to um, to retro games, uh, and you know it's only one side. You basically output two RGB cards, not the other way around. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.